The impacts of global warming, now widely acknowledged and referred to as climate change, can be seen and felt everywhere on Earth. From extreme weather events to rising sea levels, the issue has become very real and several nations around the world have made pledges to reduce their greenhouse gases. The most dramatic of these impacts can be witnessed in the Arctic. Warming at twice the rate of the global average, the Arctic sea ice is shrinking annually and the Greenland ice sheet has become unstable. Perhaps one of the most disturbing changes in the area is occurring underground in the permafrost, a frozen layer of soil that covers more than 25% of the northern hemisphere. Slowly thawing since the 1980s, long dormant microbes, infectious agents, ancient viruses and spores are now waking up, ending up in nearby water soil and food supplies. And in the video today, we're looking at 10 of these. Number 10. Anthrax. In the early 20th century, more than a million reindeer succumbed to the Siberian plague, known as anthrax, in the Western world. In eastern Siberia alone, there are an estimated 285 reindeer burial grounds, of which the exact locations of only 77 are known. According to some researchers, the Arctic permafrost, the perfect preserver for microbes and viruses due to its cold, dark, and oxygen-free conditions, contains up to 1.5 million anthrax-infested reindeer carcasses, the spores of which can survive for more than a hundred years. In 2016, an outbreak occurred after a 75-year-old reindeer carcass thawed, releasing infectious spores into the nearby water, soil, and food supply. More than 300 reindeer died and 72 herders, including 41 children, had to be hospitalized. One 12-year-old boy sadly lost his life. Scientists fear that this may not be an isolated case. Number 9. Bubonic Plague Anthrax is not the only danger lurking in the permafrost. A 2011 study also detected the DNA sequence of bubonic plague, a disease which killed more than 20 million people during the Middle Ages in the region. This has given rise to fears that virulent germs from the 18th and 19th centuries released from melting permafrost may return, especially in areas where victims of these infections were buried. Outbreaks of the highly contagious bubonic plague still sporadically occur in 35 countries worldwide, and cases are on the rise. In Mongolia, at least one person dies from the plague every year, while a 10-year-old boy caught the bubonic plague in 2016 while hunting with his grandfather in Siberia's Altai Mountains. Vaccines for more than 15,000 people were flown to the area, and quarantines were put in place to curb further outbreaks. Although scientists agree that the relationship between the plague and climate change is still not fully understood, its rise may be attributed to the fact that the plague bacterium survives and multiplies in microbes in soil and water, and melting permafrost equals, well, slushy mud. When rodents settle, dig, or dwell in the soil, they encounter the bacterium, and then it spreads via fleas. Number 8. Spanish Flu the Spanish flu killed approximately 50 million people around the world between 1917 and 1918. In the hopes of finding a hibernating specimen of the virus, a scientist from San Francisco with the name of Johan Hulton traveled to Alaska in 1997 and returned home with excavated samples obtained from a cemetery known to have had several Spanish flu victims. With the help of Dr. Jeffrey Taubenberger, they decoded the virus's entire DNA sequence and successfully regrew an active virus, proving that pandemic virus strains can indeed hibernate for long periods of time and re-emerge via a variety of pathways, once thought, that should affect prevention efforts. According to some scientists, we are just as vulnerable to a pandemic outbreak today as we were in 1918, if not more so. The world's population has quadrupled and crowding in urbanized areas can be a major factor. With a virus that keeps mutating and exchanging genes, we may find ourselves in an epidemic that could kill between 200 and 400 million people in the blink of an eye. Number 7. Smallpox in the 1890s, Siberia saw a massive outbreak of smallpox. Hundreds of infected corpses were buried under the upper layer of the permafrost next to the Kolma River. After more than 100 years, the river's floodwaters, sped up by the melting of the permafrost, have now started eroding the banks where the bodies are buried. To complicate an already nasty matter, a research team acquired and reassembled the genome's entire DNA sequence from the body of a child that died in the 17th century in 2016. This confirmed fears that smallpox has not been eradicated from the planet, only from its surface. In Mere months after the last known accidental death related to the disease, the World Health Organization declared that smallpox, or the variola virus, had been eradicated. 
Today, the only official remaining stock of the virus can be found in only two places, the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC in Atlanta, Georgia, and at Vector in Russia. Yet forgotten livestock were discovered in Bethesda, Maryland in 2014, causing fears that other institutions may have misplaced some of their stock as well. As the virus is considered an agent of bioterrorism, it's probably a good thing that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, approved the first ever drug to treat it in 2018. The drug has not been tested on humans, but it did have a 90% success rate in treating infected animals. Number 6. Leprosy and Tuberculosis Leprosy and tuberculosis were both commonplace in the first century. Although both diseases are still around today, its long incubation periods, sometimes up to 20 years, and decline in research and elimination campaigns and activities have resulted in newly diagnosed cases that are almost twice that of the World Health Organization's projections. This has caused the view that global elimination is unattainable. The causative agents of tuberculosis and leprosy, mycobacteria, are extremely resilient and slow-growing and have no known environmental reservoir. Most of the recovered DNA to date has been from medieval graveyards in Europe. But recently, DNA evidence of tuberculosis mycobacteria have been recovered from the carcass of a bison found in permafrost that is over 17,000 years old. As these cells can remain in situ, their threat to the global population and our economy remains a major threat. Number 5. Mercury the WHO considers mercury one of the top 10 most dangerous chemicals in the world. Mercury exposure can lead to a variety of serious health issues, most notably toxic effects on the skin, blood, eyes, lungs, and digestive, nervous, and immune systems. Naturally occurring in mineral ore and fossil fuels, dangerous levels of mercury found in fish and shellfish, including its natural predators, have been increasing due to human activity, and high levels of mercury can today be found in up to 10% of all Americans. Amid calls for cleaner energy and better emission regulations, scientists recently discovered that the amount of mercury currently in the permafrost is 10 times more than all of the mercury we sent into the atmosphere over the past three decades. The 15 million gallons currently vulnerable to climate change is officially the largest reservoir of mercury on the planet, and it will be released over the next century with unknown consequences to the environment. Simply put, we should enjoy the beach, oysters, and sushi while we still can. Number 4. Botulism Botulism is a rare disease caused by botulinum toxins, one of the deadliest agents known to mankind. Botulism poisoning causes muscle paralysis and usually presents with speaking and swallowing difficulties before advancing into full body paralysis. Medical intervention does not guarantee survival, but without treatment, the disease has a 50% mortality rate. Just like the anthrax bacteria, botulinum forms spores which can and have survived in permafrost for more than a century, constituting a very real threat once thawed. Spores can end up in soils, dust, and freshwater, and marine sediments where an outbreak can be established. During both avian and fish outbreaks, carcasses of the dead animals become a self-sustaining part of the food cycle as they are fed upon by maggots or scavenging fish, and then the spores can end in freshwater systems or new areas that were previously unaffected. As of 1998, Lake Erie has seen annual botulism outbreaks, and they are now becoming more common in the other Great Lakes. Number 3. Ancient Bacteria NASA not only employs engineers and astronauts, they also have several research programs where astrobiologists explore the potential of life on Mars and the possibilities of cryogenic freezing and how we can achieve and survive long-duration spaceflight. During a search in the permafrost for psychrophiles, organisms that can only be found in extremely low temperatures, NASA astrobiologist Dr. Richard Hoover discovered bacterium that had been frozen for 32,000 years. After removal from the permafrost and a sugary treat, the bacterium came back to life as if it had never been frozen. After further testing, NASA concluded that they'd found a new form of life. In 2017, scientists also discovered bacteria in a Mexican mine that may be much, much older. Trapped inside fluid pockets of retrieved crystals, these microbes also revived and started multiplying after being removed from their ancient encasings. During further tests, scientists were shocked to discover that the bacteria were resisting up to 18 different types of antibiotics. What's more, the bacteria was able to inactivate almost 50% of them. Number 2. Giant Viruses during 2013 and 2014, scientists discovered two giant viruses in the Siberian permafrost. These viruses, Pithovirus sibericum and Molivirus sibericum, are so big that they can be viewed under a regular microscope. 
Once thawed, these viruses immediately became infective, causing warnings that viruses of ancient Siberian communities also might be revived as the permafrost melts. Unfortunately for us, melting permafrost is not the only threat. At the moment, most of the region is deserted and the deeper permafrost layers are not being disturbed. However, due to the melting sea ice, the north shore of Siberia is becoming more accessible, leading to industrial expansion, with mining and drilling activities becoming very lucrative. Number 1. A host of unknown ancient pathogens Current fears of potential outbreaks do not only extend to known diseases and recently discovered pathogens. Scientists have been analyzing the DNA content of the permafrost for years and have found the DNA sequences of numerous unknown bacteria that could infect humans. The remains of Neanderthals and Denisovans, populations that settled in Siberia and were riddled with disease, are being uncovered as the snow melts. We might not be immune to the pathogens from these remains. Advances in the research of ancient DNA have proven that diseases have been co-evolving with us for thousands of years. The fact that we can be infected by diseases from ancient times is terrifying as we do not know, nor can we project, their ferocity and measure. So I really hope you found that video interesting and slightly terrifying perhaps. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and do not forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. For more from me, why not check out another channel I do called Highlight History. It's sort of a today in history thing. If you like this video, I think you'll like that as well. Please do find it linked to below. And as always, thank you for watching.